It's daily delivery debate time here with Lavelle Enil the third. Lavelle, we got some juicy ones here. Um, we talked about these ahead of time. Number one, right off the jump, go for men's basketball season started Wednesday. It's a big year, a lot of us would say, for head coach Ben Johnson. You know, lost a lot of roster turnover again. Um, you know, some promising young players coming in. But you look at it and you know, kind of the college basketball landscape, it's going to be hard for them to compete this season. If it's hard for them to compete this season, does that put Ben Johnson on the hot seat? It shouldn't, but I, I, I'm thinking that it would. Um, there are some national websites and publications that already have him as a candidate to be on the hot seat this year. And, it, and I don't think it's a little, I think it's a little unfair. Um, last year, I criticized him at the start of the year saying that he needed to have a good season or he should be on a hot seat. But they ended up 9-11 and in the Big Ten and ended up with 19 wins and going to the NIT. And I thought that was satisfactory giving, given how terrible the previous two seasons were. Um, but then the offseason came and college free agency, a free agency came and yeah. the roster has been decimated. Um and, you know, it's just dealing with the reality of college sports and the financial landscape and the transfer portal. Um, I, you know, I feel bad because, you know, the Gophers have been building a relationship with Farrell Payne since he was like a freshman in high school. And yeah. you put in all that time, all that effort, uh, all those meetings, getting to know the family, getting to know how he ticks, then getting him on campus, then developing him. And then someone gives him what anywhere between $300,000 to $500,000. And he's at Texas A&M. You know, um, no one was uh, no one was uh, recruiting Elijah Hawkins to come play yeah. basketball. Um, he may be five eight. <laughs> he may not be that tall. Uh, ben gave him a shot. He responded by being one of the leading uh, assist men in the nation last year. But here comes the nail money, and he's gone to Lubbock. Oh, by the way, Elijah. Good luck uh, on your transition from living in Minneapolis to living in Lubbock, Texas. All right. Oh, uh, and the other thing too is because the Gophers and a collective is not a powerhouse, they've got to pick and choose who to keep. They had a chance to keep Dawson Garcia, and they kept him. If they had kept Farrell, they probably could have kept Dawson. Yeah. Um, and Dawson turned down seven figure offers to stay with the Gophers. Right, which is you bonkers. Know? Yeah. So. Ben said, screw it. I'm going to go to the opposite right here. I'm going to bring in a bunch of senior mercenaries who are going to be desperate to have a great final season in a college career and see if it can work together. None of these guys were impact names on the national level. Um, the other high, like AJ store going to Kansas from Wisconsin. That's like a big time move. You know, right. uh, the Gophers moves pale in comparison here. So I don't want Ben. I don't think Ben deserves to land in a hot seat. Because uh, the forces of the uh, of free agency in college sports uh, killed this program. Well, and nil and basketball, yeah, nil and basketball is different than, than football, right? Like it's it's having yeah. an impact on football, and they, you know, in a positive way. Sometimes for the Gophers, you see them bringing in Max Brosmer. He's had a huge impact on them. You know, again, though, a guy coming in from New Hampshire, maybe not one of those bigger names, but it's definitely worked out for them. But in football. You need, you know, so many more guys. Like you can spread the money around. Like not everybody's going to jump. Like if you can add some impact players, you're going to lose some impact players. But you play more as a team. You lose two guys in basketball, it completely can derail what you got going. So I feel like NIL is a much bigger deal in basketball than in football, just because of the roster size and how much impact one or two players can have. And the collective's getting better, but it's still not what it is at some of these other powerhouse schools. No, it's not. No, not in the football. I mean, who's paying for an offensive lineman unless maybe you're uh, Georgia right. or Clemson or someone like that. So the Gophers can still recruit in that area and bring in good players. Um, it's tough now. And the other thing about this too, freshmen, incoming freshmen are going to want to get paid. And you put a, uh, someone like the University of Minnesota who doesn't have a big NIL uh, coffer. Do you give the money to the incoming freshmen or do you Give the money to, to keep the good players that you have. I would lean toward the latter. So that is going to put, you know, that's going to affect your recruiting. So yeah. it's, just, it's just a mess. But, but you know what? Everybody, everybody's in the same situation. There are a lot of colleges like the University of Minnesota. Ben's going to fight through this. It's, and if he can win with this bunch uh, of uh, transfers, it's going to be one of the better coaching jobs in Gopher history, I think.
I would agree with that. We'll see where it all ends up at the end of the season.